So today we're going to be going over data structures part three. Um, in previous, in the past uh, few weeks now, we've been going over uh, various data structures. Today will be our um, last lecture on the built-in data structures of Python. Um, so just a refresher of what a data structure is. A data structure is a means for storing and organizing a collection of data values, generally composed of primitive data types, such as strings, booleans, and numeric data types, but they can include other data structures nested within them. Um, each has their own set of methods or a defined action that can be performed on the data structure. Methods are called on a data structure using dot notation. So we'd have our, our data structure here. Oops, I remember that I can't click. <laughs> we'd have our data structure here and then the dot and then the method that we're calling on the data structure with the parentheses at the end. Parentheses, again, are very important because that signifies it's a method. If it doesn't have the parentheses, then that would be considered like an attribute of a data structure or an attribute of an object. Um, so just keep in mind, whenever we're doing methods, you need the parentheses. So there are many different kinds, each with their own relative benefits and uses. So we've seen sets before, we've seen arrays before and dictionaries. Um, today, we're gonna be uh, talking mostly about lists and uh, we'll touch a little bit on tuples and um, objects will be later in the course. All right, so lists. A list is an ordered collection of non-unique values that are of any type and are mutable. So they're ordered. The elements within a list have a defined order. So the order in which you enter them is the order in which they will remain, um, similar to um, arrays that we had before, but um, there are some key differences here. So you see here, we just use these uh, this square bracket notation for creating a list of values. Um, and this order that I entered here is the same order that came out down here. Um, so non-unique values, unlike a set, you can have multiple of the same value in a list. Um, so in, in this case, I have one one, two twos, three threes, four fours, uh, two hellos, and then a true, false, a true, and a false. So um, you'll see here that all of those were maintained. So the values don't have to be unique. Remember in a set, if we tried to do this, um, then we would just end up with one one, one two, one three, one hello, and, and so on. So, um, that's a key distinction there. These are a lot like arrays. Um, so any type. So this is where they're different from arrays. Uh, when creating a list, you do not need to specify the type of the elements within the list. And the elements of the list can be of any type needed. So if we look back at this uh, screenshot up here, I have um, numeric types. So, so even up at the top here, I have um, a floating point uh, number here. I have an integer type here, and then I have strings, and then I have Boolean values. Um, we could also have more lists in here. Um, we could have a dictionary nested in here. We could have a set. Ba you can put basically any type, any data type inside of a list um, and, and, and they can all be within the same list. So it, unlike an array where, where um, if you remember back to, um, I think it was last week, uh, an array, you have to specify whether or not it's gonna be an integer or a character or whatever it might be. Um, in this case, you don't have to do that. Um, you can just put in any data type into the uh, list. And of course, it doesn't have to have multiple data types. We could have a list that just consists of integers here. Um, and lists are mutable. You can alter the values of the elements in a list and you can alter the list itself as well. Um, so in this case here, I created a list values uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and zero. Um, if I wanted to follow the pattern and make it one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, 10, I can modify the ninth uh, index in my list or the 10th element and set it equal to 10. And then when I display my list after doing that, you'll see here that I did successfully modify that last value to 10. Um, and, and then we could, we can, we'll see later on that you can, you know, add and remove and all that um, elements to and from lists. Um, so any questions on this slide? All right. No. Cool. So uh, list continued. We can access individual elements of a list. Like arrays, elements of a list can be accessed via their index value. Um, again, just like arrays, lists are zero index, meaning the first element has index value zero and the second index has index value or the second value has index value one, et cetera. So, um, if we go, if we're looking, we're considering this list still here. So we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten because I modified it in the in in this slide. 
Um, now, if I look at, um, you know, the value at index zero, I get one. So the first element in my list is at index zero, you get the value one back. Um, index one gets the second element in the list. So we get two there. And then if I get the fifth index, that would be the sixth element. So it returns the value six in this case, just because, you know, uh, we're looking at this list here, essentially. Um, so you can use this concept of indexing to replace the value of an element with another value, like we saw in the previous slide. This is that same screenshot. Um, so we had my list. I had, you know, maybe mistakenly created uh, the ninth index or the tenth element as a zero, and I wanted it to be a ten. I'm able to modify that using the bracket notation referring to that ninth index here, and then um, set that equal to ten using the assignment operator. Uh, recall that the single equal sign is an assignment operator and a double equal sign is the equality operator. Um, yeah, so, so that successfully modifies that uh, ninth uh, index or 10th element and now it's, now its value is 10. Uh, list can also be negative indexed. Uh, negative indexing is a uh, Negative indexing is negative one indexed. So it's kind of like, uh, you know, how I mentioned zero indexing up here. If you're going with negative indexing, it's negative one indexed, meaning the last element in your list is at index negative one. So in this case, you know, I've modified this list up here. So I have the values one through 10. If I do my list uh, and then uh, get the value at index negative one, then I get the value 10. So this grabs the last element of my list. If I want to do the index, or get um, about the value that's basically the fourth from the end of my list, I can do that with negative four. So that gives me seven here. Um, this is extremely useful uh, in, in many use cases because oftentimes you don't know exactly how long your list is, but all you care about is something at the very end of your list. So um, keep in mind that you can leverage the uh, negative indexing that um, Python lists support. Um, any questions real fast before we go on to list slicing? Because uh, list slicing makes heavy use of, um, of indexes. All right, great. So list slicing. List slicing is essentially a means for grabbing a portion or a slice of a list. This is accomplished using indexes in combination with bracket notation and a colon. So for some, in, so if you wanted to grab like some index onward on, with negative indexes allowed. So say I wanna get index three onward. So then I just have my, uh, in my brackets here, I put the value or the index three and then a colon. And then the col that uh, colon without anything on the other side basically signifies that I just want um, the third index onward. So if, if we recall uh, the value, the fourth element in our list is at index um, three. So we grab index three onward. Um, we can also do that same thing with negative indexes. So um, if we want just the last three elements of our uh, list, we can do negative three colon, and that'll grab the last three elements of our list here. Um, so just remember, um, when, you're, when you want from some index onward, you give the index and then a colon and then nothing after the colon. And it works with both um, normal indexes and uh, negative indexes. Um, and, and another important thing to note here is that uh, this is inclusive. So um, this index value, so I entered index value three that grabbed the third index from my list, which is the value four. Um, and then it got that along with everything after it. So it's inclusive to that index that I enter in the bracket notation up here. Same goes here. Remember this is negative one, negative two, negative three. So I wanted negative three onward. So I did grab the value negative three. Uh, the value at index negative three. Uh, so that's included in the output list here. Um, we can also grab um, from some index to another index. So note the fir first index is inclusive. The se second index is exclusive. So as I mentioned up here, the first index before the colon is gonna be inclusive. But in this case, the second index is not uh, going to be in our list. So it's considered exclusive. So in this case, I want um, the values at index uh, three and four essentially here. So I have index three, uh, two, index five, um, but remember index five is exclusive. So we're not gonna see the value at index five in our list here. This only gives us, um, this only gives us four and five because this is at, at index three and then this is at index four. So uh, that's, that's uh, something very important to remember is that um, it's exclusive to the, uh, to the last, um, to the second index, uh, the second index that you enter here, the upper range, it's exclusive. 
uh, again, we can um, incorporate negative indexes here. So um, here I have, um, say I want basically everything up to but excluding the last index of my list. So um, remember exclusive here, so negative. So since I have, so I want index three inclusive. So we get the value four um, up to um, an excluding index, um, the, the last index in my list. So in this case, it happens to be index uh, nine, but um, so this excludes the last value in our list. So we don't see the 10 here. Um, like we like up here where I just did um, three through the rest of the list, um, we saw the value 10. But in this case, because, um, because the second uh, value that you enter here is exclusive, um, we're not gonna see that 10 in the resulting list here. If we wanted to include the 10, we just don't include this, uh, this index value here. And of course we'll see the 10 like we did up here. Um, so you can also get up to some index. And again, remember anything that comes after the colon, it's exclusive. So, um, I want, so I want everything up to index five essentially here, um, but not including index five. So we have index zero, one, two, three, and four. Um, and so we just have no value colon five. Um, it, does someone have a question? All right. Um, sorry about that. Um, if, if you have a question, feel free to unmute again. Uh, I just uh, went through to, to mute just so there's not any um, audio issues with the recording later on. Um, so uh, up to some index, remember anything that comes after the colon is exclusive. So um, basically I don't put a value here because I want everything up to that index. Um, and then this is exclusive. So I get the values one, two, three, four, and five back. So index is zero, one, two, three, and four, but we don't see index five here because again, this second value is exclusive. I'm gonna keep repeating that because it's very important. Um, and then again, want, um, oops, sorry. Say I want everything um, up to, everything except the uh, last few indexes of, uh, of, my, of my list. So everything except the last three um, values in my list. So then I get the values one through seven here. We don't see, um, eight, nine, and 10, because uh, this is exclusive. So while eight is at index negative three, uh, this uh, negative three is exclusive. So we're not gonna see eight there and we don't see anything after that. So index slicing is, or list slicing is uh, extremely useful. You'll use it a lot um, throughout programming. So I wanna pause here and make sure uh, that this is clear and see if there's any questions. All right, cool. Um, so per usual, we have uh, list methods. So, um, or well, we have methods on our uh, data structure. So in, in this particular case, we're talking about lists. We have our list methods. Uh, most array methods that we learned about um, last week, those apply to lists as well. So um, you can feel free to look back at the previous week's slides and, um, and also the lecture. And basically any of the methods there are also gonna apply to lists. But here are some that we didn't really cover when we talked about arrays. So there's the count method um, and the count method accepts a, a parameter value. So some value goes in here and it counts the number of elements with the pat number of elements in your list with the past value. So here I have this list uh, with three ones and four twos. So then I call dot count on the list. Um, using the dot notation. And then in count, I pass it uh, the value two. And this basically counts the number of twos that are in my list and it returns four. Um, so then, uh, then we can also extend our list. So the extend method takes an argument of another list. Um, so, and, and what it does is it, is it extends the existing list by appending values of the past list to the end of the existing list. So um, it will append the, the values of the list passed to the values of the list that you're calling the method on. So um, in my case here, uh, we're using my list again, which we'll recall has the values one through 10 in it. Um, I want to extend that to add the values 11, 12, 13, and 14 to it. So I call the um, extend method on my list using dot notation, pass in a list. Again, remember like this has to be a list. Uh, you can't just, we. 
it, it's important to remember these square brackets here because if if you don't add the brackets there, you're going to get an issue saying that this uh, method doesn't accept that many arguments. Um, it only accepts one argument, and that argument is a list. Um, so you pass in a list of values here. So we use our square brackets again, and I'm passing in 11, 12, 13, and 14. And now that we've extended the list, when I output it here, um, we'll see that uh, 11, 12, 13, and 14 were in fact added to our list. So this actually updates the value. Um, the this actually updates the value of the list uh, in memory. So uh, it'll it'll be persisted, and those values will remain in the list. So then then we can um, also reverse a list. A list. Um, so just like it sounds like, it reverses the elements of of the list. So uh, it, it, it doesn't accept any um, arguments in this case uh, because there's only one way to reverse a list uh, and it's just to take it the existing list and uh, flip it basically. So I take my list and I call the reverse method on it. Um, and then after outputting my list, now we see that 14 is at index zero instead of one. And you know this is uh, perfectly reversed here. I just happen to have this in order um, in, in some sort of order here. But if these were not um, sorted values, the um, reversed uh, order would still be maintained. So, um, you know, in, in this case, like down here, because this one is unsorted, if I had called um, reverse on this list, we'd see eight at the first or at index zero, um, seven at index um, one, five at index three, um, et cetera. So uh, it, would, it would reverse it um, regardless of if the list is already sorted. But speaking of sorting, um, there's also a sort method. Um, the sort method, uh, by it doesn't require an argument here. By This is the default argument. Um, so it, it has a keyword argument is what this is called. So uh, the keyword argument is a reverse and uh, its default value is set to false. So um, by default, it won't uh, sort in reverse order. It'll sort in ascending order. So um, you call it on your list and it'll sort the list into ascending order and assign that back to the existing value of, of your list in memory. But if we did want it sorted in descending order, we can set this keyword argument to true uh, to sort the, um, the list in descending order. So the default value of reverse at, as mentioned is false. So if you don't pass um, uh, the keyword argument reverse into the parentheses here, you'll end up with, um, it'll end up sorting in ascending order. So here I just, created a, um, here I just created a random, a random list of numbers. And then I call sort without passing any arguments in here. So it'll use the default value of reverse. So that default value of reverse is false. So it'll sort it in ascending order. So we now see that it's uh, sorted exactly as we would expect, two, two, three, four, five, 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 six, seven, seven, eight, nine. Um, but say we did want it sorted into descending order for whatever reason. Um, if we want to do that, we do have to pass the keyword argument reverse, set it equal to true. And then um, in that case, it'll sort in descending order. So this is the same, the same um, list up here. And uh, then when you call sort with the reverse argument set to true on that list, it um, sorts your list into descending order. So now we have nine, eight, seven, seven, six, five, 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 four, three, two, two. Um, so just keep in mind, this this doesn't require an argument, but if you want it to sort in descending order, uh, you do need to pass the reverse argument and set that to true. Any questions on our list methods before I move on from this slide? No. Cool. All right, so lists and strings, they have a useful relationship. So sometimes it can be useful to think of a string as a list of characters, as you can apply many list concepts and even some methods, but not all, to a string. So um, you can apply slicing to a string. So um, here I say I just want the um, first uh, five elements of of the list up to index five, which um, so you know this is at index five here. We see that here, um, but um, so I want everything up to index five and so I just grab hello there. So it's almost treating it as if it's a list here. Uh, and it's often useful to think of it that way. Um, we can index our strings. So say I wanted to see what value in my string, um, what, what character is at index five in my string or what's the sixth character in my string. Because remember zero indexing still applies. 
to um, strings. So this is that index zero, one, two, three, four, five is our comma. So we, end, we grab index five and we get our comma back. Um, so this is something that's extremely useful as well uh, to be able to um, determine if there's a certain value or a certain character at some uh, index of your, of your string. Um, so some methods do work on, um, on strings, but not all of them. So some list methods do. Um, so here, if I wanted to count the number of L's in my, um, in my string, I can do that. So uh, using the count method, so I call that on my string. Um, and then that, uh, and then I pass in the character I want to search for, basically, or the character I want to count. Uh, it has to be passed in quotes, because remember, strings must be in quotes. If I just passed L here, um, it would think I was passing some variable. Um, but passing it in quotes um, means that I am passing it as, as the uh, string value, as a character value. And that'll return three, because we have two L's in hello and one L in world. So we get three back. Um, we can also get the index of certain characters, so we can use the index method. So that um, this method works on uh, lists, and it also works on strings. So we call the index method on our string using dot notation. Um, again, we have to pass in uh, a string to the uh, to the method here, um, uh, passing it in quotes. So I want to find the index of our exclamation point um, in here, and that gives me um, index twelve uh, back. But as, me as mentioned, not all um, values, not all uh, methods, not all list methods work on a string because these are actually just methods that these are technically string methods. Um, so there's an index string method, there's a count string method. Uh, they just, you know, it, it's often useful to just think of them as a list in, in that case. Um, but the sort method isn't a real method on a string. Um, so, it's an, so it's not a string method, so you can't sort your string. So if, if I try to call that, I'll get an attribute error saying a stir object has no attribute sort. So remember um, strings, uh, their type is stir, S-T-R. So um, stir objects don't have the attribute sort. So I get an error here if I try to call sort on it. Uh, but if we want, with, um, if we want to apply some methods that, are, that do exist on lists that don't exist on strings, we can, uh, we can simply cast our string to a list first and then join it back together. Um, so, so we take my string um, and we set it equal to a list version of hello world. So if I output my string now, it's, this is now literally a list. Um, so it's a list of characters here um, and it just took every character and turned that into a, um, an element in my list. Uh, then say I wanted, so I wanna call the sort method so I can then sort my um, string. So I call the sort method on the my string because remember my string is now a list. Um, and then I can call the uh, join method. The join method um, can is used on a string. So you call the join method on a string using dot notation and you pass it a list. So the way the join method works and don't worry too much about this. I just wanted to show it as uh, you know a way for, for you to uh, be able to do this kind of thing if you need to in the future. If, if you try to use some sort of list method on a string and you really need it, but it's not working, you can you can take this approach. So I uh, turn my string into a list and then I call the join method. Um, so the join method, you call it on a string and the string that you call it on is what you use to join the elements of your list. So the elements of my list here are you know all these characters? I sorted it, so now it's going to be in sorted order, um, which happens to uh, be you know the space first, then the exclamation point, then the comma, then uh, D E H, and then it, it kind of just goes uh, you know in a in um, alphabetical order after you get past the special characters and such. But because I um, put an empty string here, there's nothing in between the values in the output string down here, and I know this uh, this thing here keeps getting in my way. Uh, so I'm going to try to avoid that. Um, but if I if I wanted, for whatever reason, to join these together with a space in between them, I could have just entered a space into this value here, and then we'd see the resulting string would have a space in between each value. Again, don't worry too much about the uh, join method. Just keep in mind if you need to call certain things on a on a string that certain methods on a string that exists for lists uh, that don't exist on uh, strings, you can cast it to a list first. 
um, call the method and then join it back together, uh, passing an empty string here um, uh, makes it so that uh, it, it doesn't join anything in between. And I'll just show an example later on of what happens if I wanted to say make them a CSV. So there's a comma between every value in here. Uh, so that's, that stands for comma separated value. Um, if I pass a comma into these quotes here, then we would see a comma in between each um, in, in between each value there. Kind of hoping that this pointer thing will make it so that when that goes away, nope, it doesn't, okay. Any questions on the relationship between lists and strings? All right. Um, yeah, this it's it's super useful. Um, you'll use it all the time. But uh, now on to tuples. So before we start tuples, any questions on lists in general? Cool. Sounds good. Um, so for tuples, they are an ordered collection of non-unique values that are of any type and are immutable. So ordered, uh, just like with a list, the elements within a tuple have a defined order. So the order in which you enter them is the order in which they will remain. So I entered, you know, my uh, tuple, and and, it, and the tuple uses the parentheses here. We talked briefly about a tuple when um, talking about dictionaries, um, but we use parentheses to define a tuple. So uh, the order is maintained, as we can see here. So I entered in all these values, and that's the order that they stay in um, when it outputs. They are um, non-unique. So unlike a set and more like a list, you can have multiple of the same value in a tuple. So again, here I have one one, two twos, three threes, four fours, two hellos, uh, two trues, and then two falses. Um, that's maintained, um, and and I don't see you know the the two dropping down to one, two, and down to one, three, like you would with a set if I tried to create a set using this. But again, remember parentheses for a tuple. Um, so any type, unlike an array, uh, when creating a tuple, you, you do not need to specify the type of the elements within the tuple, and the elements can be of different types, as we can see up here. And here, you know, in this one, I have floats, uh, integers, strings, and Boolean values, and they all can exist in that same tuple. Um, but tuple, uh, a tuple is immutable. So um, you cannot alter the contents of a tuple once it's set. Um, and, and this is somewhat different from a set itself. You can't modify, you can't even like add and remove elements from a tuple. You have the tuple, once it's set, that's how it's gonna be for the rest of basically uh, the existence of that tuple in in your, uh, in memory. If, if so if you, uh, yeah, you can't add or remove and you can't change the value. So here, say I wanted to change the value of um, this last element um, to 10. I can't do that. It says, uh, it gives me an error and it says tuple object does not support item assignment. Um, and, and we actually can't even add and remove items from our tuple and we'll see that uh, later on. So that's one way that it differs from a set because remember sets, we can still add and remove elements from a set. We just can't change the values of the exact element in the set. Um, in, in this particular case, the whole tuple is immutable. We would have to completely reassign the tuple if we want to change the contents of the tuple. So tuples, um, unlike sets, uh, they're more like lists. Uh, in this sense, they can be indexed and sliced. So if I want you know, to get the value at index nine, I can. Uh, it's zero, because remember, this is the same one that, that was on the previous page. So if I want to get the value at index nine, it, it does retrieve that. Remember, we can't do this with sets because sets don't have a defined order, but tuples do have a defined order, so we can index them. Um, say we want to get the value at index negative two, so negative indexing still works on tuples. Um, so that gives us nine, this is negative one, and this is negative two, so it gives us value nine. And then we can also slice it. Um, so say we want to get um, the values from index three up to index negative three. So remember it's, um, exclusive for this uh, second value, inclusive for the first value here. So we do get index three, number zero, one, two, three. So we start at four and then um, up to negative three. So negative one, negative two, negative three, but we don't actually see that value. It's exclusive. So we only see the values four, five, six, and seven. So um, indexing and slicing still perfectly valid on tuples. Um, but again, tuples are immutable. So unlike lists, you cannot modify the elements of a tuple. So as we saw in the previous slide, if I 
you know, I erroneously created this and I wanted 10 in my last value here. Um, but that won't actually, that won't actually work. I can't reassign um, the value at index nine to 10 because tuples are immutable and the values within them are immutable. Um, any questions on this slide? Awesome. So tuple methods. Tuples only have a couple methods, um, and and that's largely in part because of uh, them being immutable. But um, since they do have indexes, uh, we can call the index method on our on a tuple. Um, so we can uh, we we can pass in a value into the uh, index method here, and it returns the index of the first element of the tuple that matches the value passed. So if I create um, my tuple here with one one two twos three threes four fours two hellos two trues and then two falses. And I wanna find out the index of four. This, while I have four fours in here, it's only gonna return the index value of the first four in my tuple. So zero, one, two, three, four, five, and six. So we get uh, the value, we get um, index six returned here because the first four is at index six. Um, if I had you know, done two, then I would get, uh, one as my index, zero, one, um, and it just gives me the index of the first instance of that value passed. Uh, we can also count. Um, so just like on a list, um, we can pass in, we can use the count method and we can pass in a single value there. So it returns the number of instances of the value passed within the tuple. So um, say I wanna count the number of fives in my tuple. This tuple doesn't have any fives in it. So when I uh, call the count method on my tuple using dot notation, and I pass in the value um, five, it returns zero because there are zero fives in my tuple. But um, if I wanted to count the number of occurrences of the word hello in my tuple, then um, I can call the count method on my tuple using dot notation. And I pass in the uh, value that I want to count and that'll return two because as you can see up here, I have two hellos in my tuple. Um, but as mentioned above, because tuples are immutable, many of the methods that lists and even sets have aren't possible on a tuple. You can't add elements, you can't remove elements, you can't update the value of elements. So um, a tuple, once it's created, it's pretty much set in stone. If you need to change it, you need to um, reassign. You need to, yeah, you need to reassign uh, the tuple altogether um, instead of just trying to add or remove values or change them. Any questions on tuple methods? All right, so um, looks like we flew through today. So some additional resources. I strongly encourage all of you to go through all this. Uh, this is the list page on W3 Schools. It's basically a tutorial. It often goes through and it'll give you various information on, on lists. I don't know how many of you have uh, maybe actually leveraged this, but um, always strongly encourage it because it, it gives you a lot of information, a lot of things that I didn't necessarily cover here. Um, and then there's also the list exercises. Again, strongly encourage you to go through um, these list exercises. It'll um, it'll help you uh, solidify some of the some of the things we covered today, and it also um, it'll also give you feedback basically um, in a in a more immediate fashion, um, and you can see the answer to the question if you if you're uh, struggling and such. So the list exercises on uh, W three schools are great. Uh, same goes for tuples. Uh, they have some information on tuples at W3 schools and um, exercises at W3 schools as well. So um, please do go and leverage these. Uh, they're, they're super helpful for learning. All right. So let me exit out of this. Any questions on the materials we covered today before I go on to review the assignment? We really flew through today, so we definitely have some time. All right, so let's go ahead and review the assignment for this week. So um, I'm gonna try something different uh, this week. Uh, I want you all to take a copy of this document and complete the exercises uh, mentioned here, placing the necessary code in the blanks to achieve the desired output. So what I want here is basically, I can take this, copy, paste it. Like I want you to take this, remove the blank here and add in some code here. Um, and add in the code that would make this work. 
So the idea here is that then I can just take this, copy and paste it into my Python environment and run it and it'll, um, well, I can take these two lines here basically, I can copy paste it into my Python environment, run it, and then I will get this output here. Um, so for the first question, given a list, display it in backward order. So uh, if I give you the list uh, 100 to 500, I want you to write code that, th that will then output it in the backward order here. Um, and I don't want it to just be that you enter, you know, like print this list um, where, cause theoretically you could just take that code there and write, you know, print, and then it would output this list here. That's not what I want. I want it to be such that I can take this list and I can, um, I can uh, go in and change the values of the list and it'll actually give me the reversed uh, value of that list. Uh, this is just an example output based on the input given. So um, basically quick hint, you're gonna use one of the list methods on there. You might have to look back at, at um, the array slide to uh, see that, but, um, or check out W3Schools. W3Schools has um, all the methods there. So um, yeah, just, uh, make use of your resources, and uh, if you have issues, let me know. So for the second question, insert the value 7,000 at the end of the innermost list. So something I'll demo here in a minute is um, that we can nest lists inside of other lists. So here we have, um, you know, this, uh, so this list, the first element is 10, the second element is 20, the third element is this whole list here, um, and then the fourth element is 30, and the fifth element is uh, 40. And then in this list, this list that is the uh, third element of our outermost list has its first element 300, its second element 400, its third element, this list here, and then its uh, fourth element is 500. And then uh, this inner list here, which is the um, third element of this, uh, of this like middle list, we could call it, uh, it has values 5,000 in its, uh, as its first element and 6,000 as its second element. I want you to take this and insert 7,000 after 6,000. So I want you to write code here that would insert the value 7,000 uh, right here, essentially. Um, and, I'll, and I'll show you how like list nesting works. It, was, it wasn't really covered in the slides, but you know, as mentioned, uh, we can nest data structures within each other. So you can nest a list within a list. And then I'll show you how you can um, reference values for a uh, list within a list. Um, you kind of chain together indexing there. Um, so then uh, for question three, insert the elements H, I, and J into the innermost list. So again, we have, you know, an outer list here, and then another inner list, another inner list, and then even another inner list here. I want you to insert H, I, and J into this inner list here. And you can see the desired output here. I bolded the uh, the inserted characters. Again, we'll go through how you can um, access um, inner, inner lists and, and things like that. Um, so for question four, given any list, find the value 20 in the list and if present, replace the first occurrence with 200. Write your code so that the same lines of code can be used for all use cases below. So um, if I have my list and my list is 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 50, and 20, um, I want you to write code that would replace the first um, value of 20 with 200 um, and only the first one. So we had a second 20 in there that remains 20. So I want this to be uh, just this first in instance to be 200. But the, the same line of code, um, oops, the same line of code needs to work for this particular list here where there isn't a single 20 in here. So basically what I'm hinting at here is I don't want you to take, you know, the, um, the fourth element here and just replace it with 200 because in that in that case then you would be if if this were our input list that would be taking um, the value 21 and replacing that with 200 that's not what i want i want only if the 20 is present the first instance to be replaced so um, in this particular case it would just return the same exact list um, because there's not a single 20 in this list so there's no 20 to replace with 200 and then same thing goes for uh, this use case uh, I replaced. So it's basically the same list up here, except with the 20 replaced with a 21. Uh, so you would replace this 20 with 200. So you need to build your code so that it's dynamic enough that it'll um, work with any list passed. So like while I'm giving sample inputs and sample outputs, your code should be adaptable to any list that I 
um, pass in to you uh, for these particular questions. Obviously, these ones up here, they, they will be just, you know, the existing list for uh, two and three, just the existing list. But for one and four so far, your code needs to be adaptable to any list that I happen to throw in there. Um, so then for question five, retrieve the fifth through eighth elements of a list. Um, so again, this has to be adaptable to any list, but um, you know, we have one, two, three, four, five. Um, so I want you to retrieve these uh, fifth through eighth elements, five, six, seven, and eight. Um, I want your code to be able to work with any, um, with any list. So not just this, uh, this list here. So I don't just print, you know, the list six, 77, three and 77. Uh, it needs to, you know, actually grab the fifth through eighth elements of the list and um, then print that out. All right. Uh, and then for the final question, uh, retrieve the last six elements of a list, write your code so that the same lines will work for both of the use cases below. So in this particular case, I have 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 50, and 20. So I want to get the last six elements. So that's uh, 10, 15, 20, 25, 50, and 20. We kind of just ignore the five here. Um, and, but then in this case where we have a much longer list, uh, I just want to get the values 8, 9, 4, 66, 7, and 99 because those are the last six elements of the list there. Um, and so this assignment is really supposed to be um, you know, a lot of practice with indexing and slicing and things like that. Uh, the reason I wanted to do it this way is because indexing and slicing is something you're going to do constantly. And uh, sometimes I think it helps to just get practice with the, um, the raw concept instead of having to try to apply it to um, like a, a broader assignment like I've been doing so far. So uh, let me know what you all think of this assignment when you do submit it. Uh, if you think it was, if you end up thinking it was too easy or uh, too difficult, if you liked it more or less compared to the assignments I've been doing uh, so far. Um, yeah, I'm open to any feedback. I want this to be uh, as effective for you all as possible. So please provide feedback. Great. Any questions on the assignment before I go on to some demos? Cool. All right. Um, so this is this was just uh, from the previous week. So let me just create a new file here. All right, so um, I want to, well, I guess I can show some of these in the Python console as well. Um, so the one of the things I wanted to show um, is, is how you can have you know, lists nested within each other. So if I create my list here, and I have the values one, two, three, and then another list. So I, one, two, three are the first three elements. And then I have another list for um, five, six, and then say I have another list within that list. Oops, and remember, commas are important here. Another list uh, within there. So seven, eight, nine. And then um, say here, so this is still part of uh, this other list here. And then this one is part of the outermost list. Um, and something that's helpful that uh, Python or and PyCharm really does is when you have your cursor next to a certain set of brackets or with, um, yeah, next to a certain set of brackets, it'll show you which uh, bracket is the corresponding bracket. So we see that this is our innermost list. This one is our um, middle list, we'll call it here. And then this one is our outermost list. I just want to make sure that, okay, cool. Yeah, so say that, um, so now I have my list. Um, if I output that, we'll see, you know, it's a list with um, first three elements or one, two, three, then the fourth element is a, a list, is a whole list. And then the fifth element is 11. And then this uh, list here, first three elements are four, five, six. And then the fourth element in it is um, seven, eight, nine. And then um, the fifth element is 10. And then this innermost list here, it, it is just a, a normal list, nothing nested in there um, with the value 789 in it. So if I want to, so let's see, we want to get, so we want to get this list here. Uh, the way we can do that is we just um, access, as you might guess, we just access um, the fourth element uh, or the third index in our list. So if I just pass the three there, 
that returns that whole list because this is a single element within this broader list. Um, but now say I wanna get uh, the value five from this list. Um, the way you can do that is by basically chaining together your indexes. So now I wanna get the value five, which is at index one uh, within this innermost list. So I ch I'm kind of chaining together these brackets here. So I have um, you know, the three, cause I wanna get the third element from the outermost list. And then I wanna get the, um, sorry, not the third element, the fourth element, the third index from the outermost list. Um, and then I wanna get the second element or first index from the second list that I'm accessing here. Um, and then that'll give me the value five because uh, we first get, so this is basically getting that list that I showed, that we showed here. And this is getting, sorry. And then this is getting um, the second element there. Let's say we actually wanna get this list here. Um, you, you can probably guess where this is going. Uh, now I wanna get um, the fourth element or third index of that uh, inner list. So that's going to return this whole list here because this is a single element within this list. So what we've done here is we've grabbed the third element of the outermost list and we're grabbing the third element of the innermost list or of the middle list, which gives us the innermost list. Now say we want to get the first value in our innermost list. We just keep chaining them together here. Um, so we want to get the first element or the first, so the zero index of our innermost list um, so we expect this to return seven, and in fact, it does. So you can always chain together things like this. We can, multi we can modify values within a list like this. So say, for whatever reason, I want to replace that seven with um, the word success, you know, just showing that I successfully changed that value. I execute that. Now, if I output just my list, we'll see that that value was actually, was actually replaced there. We can also call... Um, we can also call methods on these uh, innermost lists. So, so here, uh, this is my innermost list. Recall that uh, you know I'm getting the third element of my outermost list, which is this list, and then the third element of my middle list, which is this list here. Now, say I want to append, or let's say, let's say I want to remove um, remove the value eight from that list. So I can do that dot remove and then remove eight. So now if we look at um, my list overall again, uh, it's successfully modified that innermost list and eight is no longer in there. Um, and if I just output this, we can see you know, that list was successfully modified. So that's how you can um, deal with uh, lists nested in other lists. That's an important thing to note, especially for the assignment for specifically for uh, questions two and three, hint, hint. Um, yeah. So let's see, there was something else in the assignment that I wanted to talk about. Um, Hi, Dave, it's Hugo over here. Can hey, you Hugh. do an example using reverse? Using reverse, yeah, definitely. So um, let's let's do it with this list up here. So let's do it with my list. So if I take my if I have my list right now, you know, it's one, two, three, and then this list is uh, this element, and then um, 11 is there. So if we reverse this list, it's going to reverse just the outermost list. So we reverse this. What we can expect is that 11 is now going to be our first element or index zero. And then this will be our second element. And then this will be our um, third, fourth, and fifth. So we'll do that now, execute that. Now we look at my list. So something important to note here, this innermost, these innermost lists did not reverse. So uh, I'm glad you asked this question, Hugh, thank you. Um, the innermost list was not affected by this reverse operation. It was only the outermost list that was affected and the only way that you can kind of consider this being affected is that its position in the outermost list was changed. But this list did not reverse. It's still the same list as, the, as is the case here. If we wanted to reverse, say, the innermost list, we want to do it, um, it, we want to, do it to that list, then we can, <coughs> we can do um, my list. So now uh, this is at index one, right? Because this is index zero. So this is index one of that, uh, of that list. So we get index one. We'll, we'll just, you know, let's just go through and confirm that I have everything right here. So index one, yep, 
we're good there. Now I need to, now I want to reverse this list here. So I need to get the zero, one, two, three element there. And actually let's, let's do something even more useful here. Let's do the, um, do one. And we're not sure where this list is here. So I want to take this list and I want to get the index of that list in my innermost list. So that tells me it's at index three. Great. Now I know that um, if I want to reverse that list, um, I now need to add index three here. Let's just confirm that um, I'm not going crazy. And, and that was, uh, that is in fact at index three. It is cool. Now we can reverse that. Now, if we look at my, the broader my list, we'll see that uh, it's nine success instead of success nine. It didn't affect the uh, outermost list. It didn't affect the middle list. It only affected this innermost list uh, here. Um, and, and hopefully that was helpful to see how, you know, if you're not sure where something is, use the index value. If you don't know where a value is going to be in your list, um, again, a hint for the assignment, um, you, uh, you, you'll want to use the index value if you're not sure where some value might be, or the index method, if you're not sure where some value might be in your list and you want to get the index of it so that you can then use it in, uh, in your indexing here. So awesome question. Thank you so much for asking, Hugh. I hope that was helpful to you and everyone else. Uh, anything else anyone wants to see? You know, I want this to be most value as valuable as possible for you all. Okay. Um, so something important about lists. Um, so, so my list here, we have one index zero, uh, one, uh two three and four so if i try to get the index <coughs> excuse me the value at index five i'm going to get an error here and that's because i don't have an index five in this list so be careful to make sure that um you're not um adding an index that doesn't exist um in your list otherwise you're going to get an index list index out of range error um so if so, then the same thing could go here, where if I wanted, you know, to get index one, and then we know that this has, this has um, values one, two, or indexes zero, one, two, three, and four. So um, if I try to pass a five here, I'm again going to get an index out of range um, because this inner list that I just tried to grab index five from doesn't have an index five. Um, so just keep that in mind. It's it's important to remember um, index errors will come up. Um, so if you do see this error, hopefully you'll be able to recall this and, and know what that means. Um, let's see. So we can we can also slice. We can take index slices of uh, inner lists. So say we wanted to just get the values up to index three from our inner list. So let's just output my list again so you can see where I'm doing here. So, so from our, this is our middle list here. We want everything up to index three. So zero, one, two, this is index three. Remember that um, the thing that comes after the colon is always gonna be exclusive. So we aren't going to include this value here. So we get up to in everything up to index three. So it's, it's, it's kind of useful in this sense because you can kind of think of it as instead of an index, you could also think of it as the, the first three elements of the list. Um, sometimes that's helpful, but you know, we could still end up with a, um, with an index error here, um, or I, let's see. So actually we don't get an index error here. Uh, I take that back, um, because we're just saying everything up to index six, there's no index six, but that's basically the whole list. Um, so, uh, we, we don't get an error there. Let's see what happens if we try to do, um, this. So if we get index six onward, this list doesn't have, this list here doesn't have an index six. So index six onward is just an empty list. There's nothing there. So we uh, get an empty list back. Um, yeah, so uh, that's list slicing in a nutshell. Um, let's see, something that uh, you gotta be careful of here is you don't wanna have, say we want index three to index two. Um, don't don't reverse these if if you have, if your first index is greater than your second index, it's always gonna return an empty list. So be careful about that. Um, it's it's a mistake that you can easily make just from you know uh, missing the keys or something. 
Uh, but just, you know, keep in mind, if you ever reverse the values here, you're always going to get an empty list. It's pretty deterministic. If, if you're wanting to, you know, if, if this is something you want to do, you might as well just, you know, do that because you're always going to get an empty list. Um, cool. So any questions, anything else anyone would like to see demoed before I uh, stop sharing or before I stop recording and um, review what I had expected for the assignment this last week? All right, great. So I'm going to stop the recording here in a moment. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining. Uh, we'll talk next week, and now I'll, I'll stop recording.